Hi, my name is Gabor Sabo, and this is the first part of a series of presentations about Perl 6, the language. In this part, I'm going to introduce scalars. I'm using Rakudo, which is the most advanced implementation of Perl 6. You can download Rakudo from its website, either in binary format or in source code format, and then you can build it yourself. If you need any help, the best way to get help is to join the IRC channel uh, Perl 6 on irc.freenode.net. There are many helpful people and you can sometimes also find me. My nickname is uh, as you can see it here. Once you downloaded uh, Rakudo and installed it, you can type Perl 6 on the command line, press enter, and then soon you will get into the REPL mode of Perl 6. This can be done both on Linux as I'm using it, or on Windows, or on Mac OS, and probably other Unix machines, machines as well. Once in the REPL, you can start typing in various commands of Perl 6. The first one I would like to see is the th say keyword that will get a value and it will print it to the standard output. Similarly, I can give it a string and it will print out the string. Now, Perl 6 is object oriented, so instead of saying say hello, I can say I can write hello and then dot say which will call the say method on the hello string object. The rest of the examples are saved in the files. In order to show them, I used the slurp function of Perl 6 that can get a value, a string, a name of a file. It will read the content of the file. And because we are in a REPL, it also prints out the result of the slurp function, so you can see the content of the file. The first line is use v6. This is not a requirement, but it's very useful because once you start typing in Perl and the name of the script, you will actually execute Perl 5 and trying to run this script with Perl 5. Without use v6, you would get a strange error message, Perl 5 not understanding your code. With use v6, you will get a helpful error message that will tell you that your version of Perl is not new enough for this kind of code. The second part of the code is just say again with a string. In order to try this example, I can go again and type in slurp, but now instead of letting it print it out, I call the eval function on the result of slurp, so eval will get the content of the file, will compile it and then execute it. And that's what happens, it prints out hello world to the screen. The second example, as you can see, has the same line and then it prompts for a value on the command line. This is the way how in Perl 6 we can ask the user some question and then read the input from the standard input from the keyboard. So prompt will print this out and then wait till the user types in something and presses enter. The content that the user typed in will go into this scalar variable. In Perl 6, just as in Perl 5, uh, the scalar values, scalar variables uh, all start with a dollar sign and then the name of the uh, scalar variable and they can contain either a number or a string or any individual uh, single value. In Perl 6 you have to declare every variable before use so here we use the my keyword in order to declare the variable. Once I have this variable and the content I can use say again to print out a string and put dollar name the variable inside the double quoted string. Unlike in many other languages, this won't print dollar and name, but it will print the content of dollar name. This is what we call interpolation, and this is the same as it was in Perl 5. Running this code now asks me my name. I type in my name, and then it prints out hello foo, how are you? Perl 5 users might be surprised that there is no new line after the foo, even though I didn't jump off the new line from the input. That's because prompt, as most of the other ways of reading input in Perl 6, automatically removes the new lines from the end of the lines. Trying the next example here. It asks me when, were, when was I born, so I type in 2000 because that's easy to type. And then it gives me an answer. 
Now we obviously see that the 13 is calculated from 2000 and from the year where Perl was created. Let's see how it works. The first line, or the second line, you can see it's already familiar. It's prompting for a question and then reading in the content into the dollar year scalar variable. Then there is a condition. If dollar year is larger than this number, which is the year when perf zero per one was released. So as you can see in Perl 6, you don't need to put parentheses around the conditional. You can still you'd, you'd still need to put the curly braces around the block that will be executed if the conditional is true. Then within the conditional, you'll see only a single string. You don't see the uh, two strings and an expression. In Perl 6 you can embed any expression within a double quoted string just by putting the expression within within the curly braces. What, it ha what will happen is Perl 6 will notice that there is an expression here, execute it, and the result will be embedded in this string. In the next example Again, we are asking the user for the same question, but this time we are checking uh, two conditionals, whether this year is between two different numbers. As you can see, we don't need to ask two separate, uh, we don't need to uh, uh, make two separate conditionals and connect them with an end keyword. We don't need to do that. In Perl 6, you can chain various conditionals together. The last example, in the last example, again, I ask uh, for an, uh, a number, and then normally I would write this. I would check whether this lucky number is equals or 3 or 7 or 13. In Perl 6 you don't have to do that. You can actually say, ask whether luck, the luck is equal to 3 or 7 or 13. This is what's called a junction. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and then start using Pro 6 soon. See you.